The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Have you ever been in the cockpit of a jet plane... Faced that amazing array of instruments, row on row. Everything that science and mathematics can do to make man safe. And yet, when the elements choose to outwit them, the pilots still have to answer the challenge. And of all nature's challenges in the air, the most dreaded is the one known as C.A.T., Clear air turbulence. I don't like the way the temperature's dropping, Jake. I smell trouble. Ah, we're cleared at this altitude, Chad. No wind here. What about clear air turbulence? There have been reports. Ah, I knew it. I knew it. With a good Lord help us, the cat's got us by the tail. Our mystery drama, The Time Fold was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Paul Hecht. It is sponsored in part by Sinoff, the sinus medicines, and True Value hardware stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The Electra's all washed and loaded, and you're on your way. You figured 300 miles the first day, but with all of Electra's luxury and room, you're out 400 miles before you know it. Not only that... But the EPA mileage estimates are 22 highway, 15 city, and 18 combined. That's with the standard 5.7 liter engine and automatic transmission. Of course, your mileage will vary depending on how and where you drive, your car's condition, and how it's equipped. And EPA estimates are lower in California. But it's nice to know that a car with as much prestige and elegance as Electra can also be efficient. Buick Electra, a car that can actually make you look forward to a long trip. They surely will have found you. Electra models are equipped with GM built engines supplied by various divisions. See your dealer for details. In the field of private executive airplanes, Number one is the Silver Streak, a twin-engine jet designed to seat 12 in the utmost luxury, capable of flying 3,000 miles without refueling, fully automatic, a jewel. Feed its computer the size of a small camera, and except for takeoff and landing, you could rely on automatic pilots. The Barracuda, as this plane is named, is a corporate plane. But no one ever uses it except J. Bruce Proctor. He is the only passenger, with the exception of Meg Chatham, his secretary. Flying the plane are number one and two boys, pilot Chad Stevens, co-pilot Jake Slade. How's the weather, Jake? Wild, Chad, wild. What? We get a front beating up the sky, 6-0. It's a big mother. Well, not so long as we stay clear. This doesn't bother me, it's the other. Huh? What? Uh, hold it a minute. XN 743 to Little Rock VOR. Do you have a weather update, my flight path? Roger, XN 743. Stand by. What's well, a good word? Well, he put in his nickel. Now we wait for Charlie Computer to answer. Is that possible CAT canceled? Well, what do you have to ask for? You can see what's up front. Well, it isn't always what's up front that counts. Like, who's going through that? Oh, like you said, we bypass. Yeah, only which way? Who you are, this is two, seven, four, three. I read you. Cancel the CAT. Well, what about those pilot reports? No sweat. Light turbulence, 1900 hours, central. Commercial 747 at 350, this side of Kansas City. Ditto corporate pilot flying jet over Shreveport at 280. Report, no turbulence. Will you follow machine plan or file new flight plan? Notify. I'll get back to you, VOR. Chad? Yeah. 
Chad, what's eating you? Uh, anytime I hear anything about clear air turbulence, I get goosebumps. You ever ridden any out? Nope. Well, me neither. I'm not anxious to try. So why play Lone Ranger? You got a clean bill of health if you pick up the new MFP. Yeah, which will bring us into New York pretty near an hour late. I'll be later if you try to go around the front the other way. I guess. Okay, I'll swallow my hunches and follow the rest of the sheep. You better tell our boss, the great shepherd, that his little sheep are going to be late tonight. Yeah, look, why don't you tell Proctor? You handle them better than me. Not anymore, I don't. Not after the last few flights and the way he's handled Meg. Hey, 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 hold up, lover boy. Anybody got an eye for that lady? It's got to be me. You're married up and all. Yeah, don't remind me. Uh-oh. Gone sour again? <laughs> Still. You, uh... You think Proctor's really making out with Meg? Proctor doesn't make out with anyone. He just issues a requisition. He owns us all, body and soul. Oh, he doesn't own me. <laughs> okay, free spirit. Then what are you wasting your life up here in this old cockpit playing second fiddle to Mr. Proctor's uniformed air chauffeur? Now you can't knock the pay, and I like to hang loose. There's too much red tape with the airlines. Well, you could call your life your own. If you don't like it, why don't you check out? Don't knock your elders. I'm too old to go into commercial flying. <laughs> At 35. 37. It would take too long to get seniority and fall down that captain's pay. I have a wife keeps me in debt, remember? All right, go back and tell the boss man we're going to be behind schedule. You blow his stack. <laughs> Money can't buy everything. Yeah, just try to tell him that. You're the diplomat. Besides, I want some privacy. For what? I want to call the wife. Meg, build me another scotch. Yes, J.B. How about one for you? Oh, no, not while I'm working. I, I mean, as a secretary. One hour out of Houston, we're still working on these merger papers. Oh, why bother with New York steel and casing? That's small potatoes. Because once I get that pokey little firm in my hip pocket, then international's got to come to me on its knees. <laughs> and once I get them, I'm pretty near as big as I want to be. And how big is big? The most. Number one. I got a hind end don't fit too comfortable in anything short of the catbird seat. Hmm. I guess we all ought to know that by now. Here's your drink. Hmm. A little short on scotch and long on ice. Oh, I thought you might like to try something in moderation. Tell me, what are you going to do when you die, J.B.? <laughs> what the devil are you talking about? I'm not planning to die. Oh, I don't mean right away, but that's one deal you can't buy yourself out of, as it must to all men. You know, I don't know what the Sam Hill's got into you lately, Meg, but I'll tell you one thing. I don't lay out all I do on you to get sniped at. If you think you can... Yes, Slade, what do you want? Uh, excuse me, sir, but Skipper asked me to tell you we've got some weather we've got to go around. We're going to get into New York about, uh, about an hour late. No, no, that's no good. I got a meeting with my lawyer as soon as the plane lands. Can't we climb over the stuff? Uh, it's too high, Mr. Proctor. This is a 60,000-foot front. Then go through it. Mm, you're in that much hurry to mount the throne? Forget it, Meg. This is business. Business is time, and time is money. <clears throat> Slade. No way we can beat it. When the man upstairs makes the deal, no, sir. No shortcuts. Well, you'd have to talk that over with the skipper. I might just do that right now. Uh, uh, give him a couple of minutes, sir. He's just uh, busy uh, realigning the course. Where are you calling from, Chad? What do you mean, where am I calling from, Alice? Isn't that obvious? 33,000 feet over Shreveport. And would you mind telling me where you were when I called before you left Houston? Mind in my own business, I expect. Yeah, you were so tied up you couldn't answer the phone, huh? Maybe I wasn't home. Look, let's not play games. Just wanted to let you know we should be at LaGuardia around 11 and to ask you to please pick me up at the usual place. Oh, just like that. I expected you home for dinner. Did you? And why didn't you answer the phone when I tried to call you to tell you I wouldn't make it? I went down to the store for cigarettes or something. Or something, Alice, huh? You're not drinking again, hmm? Same old thing. You can't trust me. Alice, are you going to meet me at the field? Maybe. I have nothing better to do. I never mind. I'll grab the limo or a cab, but I'll be home in a few hours. And then we can... Well, don't hurry on my account. Maybe I'll be around, maybe not. What difference does it make anymore? we got nothing left. Oh, we 
back to that again. We never left. Well, why don't you come right out and say it? You want a divorce. Only on my terms, lover. Well, you can't expect me to sit back and let you take me six ways from nowhere. Why not? Didn't you me? Alice, come on. Just because we've lost whatever we once had, we don't have to fight dirty, do we? Not us. Then cut me loose. On your terms. Only on my terms. I want it all, lover. Now, why don't you find your own way home? Alice? Alice? It's kicking up. Look at that. Hey, Jake. Yes, Kip, right there. Hey, uh, how's it going? I don't know. Maybe we're kicking around quite a bit on my way up for Now, that's just loose turbulence around the edge of the front. That doesn't matter. Yes, so what does? Uh, I, I don't know. Get your phones on. Pull on Kansas City and get me a weather update. Roger. Look, what's got you so steamed? Uh, hunch. The wrong vibes. Look at that outside temperature, how it's dropping. So what? Why should... No, I... no, no, forget it. Just get me that weather report. Roger. This is XN743 to Flight Service Station. Request weather information on our new heading. We are at 330, bearing 320. Repeat, that is 320. Are we still at same segment? Beta 4. How'd you like to build me another scotch? Mm -hmm. To stoke you so you can keep knocking out enough ideas to gobble up the world? Or to relax? Oh, we sifted through all the papers. It's uh, time for fun games. In that case, you got your scotch. Uh, you'll join me? Mm, I just might. <laughs> Sometimes you even like me, don't you? <laughs> That's a fine question to ask a woman. Who... I want you to be different. Now I can buy all of that. I know. You bought me. Oh, now, don't say that, Meg. No, it's true. Well, I didn't think so at first. But then the sun was in my eyes. Huh? There's a wild glory in absolute power, J.B. It dazzles the subject. Like Louis the Fourteenth did. You're trying to make fun of me again. No, no, not really. Here. Want to drink a toast? Sure. To what? To thanks. So many thanks. And farewell. Hmm? To... to who? To me. Uh, no way. Oh, why not, J.B.? We're at a dead end. It didn't work for us. It works for me as long as I say it does. No one walks out on me. Well, I'm not walking out. I just want to shake hands and agree to end a bargain. Mm -mm. Not until I'm ready. You know too much about me, lover. You're too dangerous to let go. How can you stop me if I want to? You'd be surprised how many ways, if I ever made up my mind to use them. I don't believe it. Hey, what is this, Kevin? The temperature, it's dropped again. We've left the front behind. There's only light turbulence. I know, but something's out there. Hey, 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 what are you doing? Cutting airspeed. What do you read? Mac 8, 245. But with all the hurry, what... what... Did you press the call button, Chad? Yeah, Meg, I want you to secure everything back in the cabin in the galley. Belt yourself in with the uh, big boss. Oh, I just mixed a drink. Well, dump it. Get rid of the glasses and do as I say. But we just passed the front. The sky is as blue as the 4th of July. Let's not mess around, Meg. I'm preparing for severe air turbulence, and you'd better get back inside pronto. Yes, sir, Captain. Hey, come on, Chad. What's eating you? That's a hunch. You know what I got my school in? Barnstorming, stunt flying, ever since I came out of Korea and went civilian. I love all these instruments. And for all they feed into my brain, I still fly by what's at the other end of my spine. And when that aches, when I feel my backsides in a bucket, I'll fly by that every time. I smelled it. Oh, dear air turbulence. Hang in with me, Jake. It's trying to take a stick out of my hands. We must have shot up a thousand feet. The updraft's wild. Watch your trim. I'm holding. Oh, no, you're not. You're upside down. We're in a dive. You're disoriented, Jake. We're climbing. You've got to be crazy. Check your instruments. Come on. Help me bring her nose down. Roger. 
Holy mother, will you look at the wing shake? They'll throw the engines right out of their mouth. No. There goes one of them, I think. Jake, help me get her nose down. Or... She... Ah, she stalled out. Now we dive. Hang in there. We're going into a spin. Four people in a modern aircraft, equipped with every safety device and instrument to protect lives, caught in the pilot's dread. The phenomenon known as clear air turbulence, or more simply, C-A-T, cat, spinning as helplessly as a bullet, but without any destination or target, and doomed to end up in a world beyond our own. I shall return shortly with Act Two. This year, cut down on your yard work as you cut your lawn. Hi, Pat Summerall to tell you True Value Hardware Stores offer the Jacobson self-propelled 20-inch twin blade mulching mower. It makes yard work easier by turning grass clippings into lawn food and by eliminating bagging and raking. The twin blades cut and recut your grass into tiny pieces that disappear into your lawn, decompose quickly, and become vital nutrients for the soil. So as you cut your grass, you're helping fertilize the lawn as well as eliminating bagging and raking problems. And the Jacobson 20-inch mulcher from True Value Hardware Stores comes with another exclusive feature to make your yard work easier. Its power burst handle gives extra engine power to help cut through long, tough, or wet grass quickly and easily and without stalling. So cut down on yard work as you cut your grass with the Jacobson 28 self-propelled twin blade mulcher. It's just two sixty nine ninety five at participating True Value Hardware Stores. Now that the cat's out of the bag, I think I should say a few words about this acronym, the three letters that spell out clear air turbulence. It's a very rare phenomenon, and every commercial pilot is trained to react instinctively to its unexpected appearance. But like every other cataclysm in nature, sometimes it's beyond mechanical or human control. The air shock has sent the plane into a high-speed stall. As it whirls and falls, the instruments vibrate violently. Impossible to read. Mr. Skipper, what can we do? Hit left rudder right hard as you can. Nose up. She's led. Oh, manual. Buster got it. The only chance we have. Uh, what? Damn, brief case hit me right on the head. Never mind your head. What you're trying to say right now is your... What was that? I don't know. We're not in a dive anymore. And we're out of the spin. Look out for the briefcase. It's not... It's not going anywhere. Yeah. That's right. It's... It's just... Hanging there in midair. Hey, look outside. It's bright sunlight. Well, it can't be. We were coming up on 2,100 hours. It was night. Well, it isn't anymore. Hey, look at the controls. They're slack. Well, maybe the cable snapped if we're out of electric power. No, no, I don't think so. Have a gander at the instruments. Holy cow. They're crazy. They just don't read. How come? Did every system, all the backups blew? I don't know. I don't think so. But what I guess is... I'm afraid to say. What, Chad? We're in free flight. I don't know how. But somewhere we spun right through a hole out of the atmosphere and ended up in space. Are you nuts? If you had just one point of reference after a blind flight, what would you guess the only land mass we could see might be? Where? About 10 o'clock, right off to the left. We were only at 33,000. That couldn't be... The Earth? No. No way. Oh, but you know what it is just as well as I do. The moon. Yeah, that's just what I read. Look at the configuration. But, but that, that, that's crazy, Chad. What are we, dreaming or dead or what? I think we're in free orbit around the moon. Come on, how? From 33,000 feet to nearly 90 million miles in one second, how? Maybe it wasn't CAT after all. Maybe we just fell through a hole in space, got folded up in the time warp. Whatever's happened, we've got to get busy. 
First, there's too much pressure in this cabin. We gotta release it before we just plain disintegrate. Okay, Ken. Why not stay? Take it easy, real slow. Roger. And not too much. We have to hang on to all the oxygen we have. What for, if you're right? All we're with now is the insurance. Well, we can try to get the engines turning over. But no atmosphere? Well, for what? We're yawing pretty badly. We could get her on an even keel. I'm going to try to fire them. Meanwhile, you better check aft and see what happened to Meg and the big wheel. KB? KB? Huh? You all right? Yeah, yeah, certainly. If there was some kicking around, I'm going to have a few words with Chad Stevens. Oh, why do you have to automatically blame Chad? He's flying the plane, isn't he? Who else would I blame? Well, it seems to me, thanks to Chad's foresight in building us in, that we're lucky to be alive. Yeah, it's what I pay him for. And I pay him enough so he doesn't have to get caught in them. Well, you were the one who didn't want him to go around. I'm not going to argue with you. Let's get out of our seatbelts. Don't you think we should wait till we're released? I don't have to take orders from anyone. And I'm getting a little tired of... T.B., what is it? What the devil? Now, what's wrong? It, it's, like, it's like I'm floating. D- don't unbuckle your belt. Why not? Uh, well, I, I, I can't tell you except uh, move your arm. Maybe you'll see. It's, oh. it's as if we didn't have any weight at all anymore. Yeah, I see what you mean. But what... Jake, what's the matter? Look, uh, I'll try to explain that in a moment best I can. I, I don't really understand myself, but until we all get belted down, nothing's going to make much sense. Uh, when I belt myself down again, it's going to be beside the so-called pilot of this plane. Now, I want to know what's going on straight from the horse's mouth. <laughs> I demand to know what's happening. Just take up on your belt and sit back, Mr. Proctor. Hollering isn't going to help. Where are we? How late are we going to be into New York? All right. First questions first. Where are we, sir? Just an educated guess. In orbit around the moon. <laughs> are you out of your mind? I don't know. What I suspect is um, I'm out of our world. Now, what the deuce does that mean? Well, at the least, I don't think we're on our way to LaGuardia Airport, New York. Then where are we on our way to? Infinity. You know, Mr. Proctor, if I were a deeply religious man, I would say that all four of us on this plane were on the way to meet our maker. No, there's no question, Meg. We're... We're in free flight somehow. How, Jake? Search me. Chad says we fell through a hole in the time warp. What? But I don't even know what that means. All I do know is where we are right now. Where? In orbit about the moon. <gasps> well, can we land there? In this craft? Forget it. Well, then what's going to happen to us? That's the question none of us should ask, honey. Because I'm sure none of us wants the answer. How long? Oh, 48, 72 hours, as long as the oxygen lasts. We can't get back to Earth? How? If we really are in moon orbit, no way. No way we can get this crate back home. I'd like to talk to Chad. He won't tell you any different. Well, that's that's not what I'd like to talk to him about. Where are you going, Mike? That's a good question, J.B., since I have to float and bump. I, I don't seem to have much control. None of us do. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Who does? Where are you going? Back for a drink. If I can ever make the galley. Uh, why don't you build one for me? Hmm? Build your own, J.B. I've got other fish to fry. Just relax. Let yourself go, Meg. It's so long since I could do that, I've forgotten how. Well, it's never too late to learn. Except now. Uh Uh-uh. Relaxing is a full-time job. Uh, There we are. You're almost in Jake's chair. Here. Uh, Let me help you with a seatbelt. No, I I, I don't need a seatbelt. This flight's smooth as honey. Oh, well, you'll need it to hold you down. Oh. Oh, Won't you? There you are. Now, what can I do for you? You can level with me, Chad. It's that important. Okay. What's happened to us? I don't know. Hmm. Jake said something 
about a hole in the sky. And the fourth dimension has to be involved somehow. By our standards, you don't travel 90 million miles in a second or two. You think we did? I, I don't have any other explanation. And what happens now? We're drifting in orbit. Now, even if I had the kind of engines I need in this aircraft under normal conditions, we couldn't re-enter the Earth's atmosphere or, or even the moon. What? Well, we'll... We'll last as long as the oxygen lasts. How long? I honestly don't know, Meg. 24 hours, maybe. Not more than 48. Then we're going to die? <laughs> you don't expect me to answer that. Except you did. It was something I had to know. Ted? Yeah? We could have fussed around, as we have. And nothing would ever have happened because neither of us could make it happen. Ted. Yeah? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. But I couldn't start it. Oh, you had to wait for me. I guess maybe I, I just prayed. It wasn't because I was scared of him. And what? You and your conscience. What you were married to. Well, she is my wife. Oh, in name. What do you owe her? Mm, everything. Everything I own. Oh, well, give it to her. What does it matter? Do you own yourself? What? I didn't. I sold myself. And I want to buy it back. My self-respect. Is that all? Oh, no. <laughs> My whole soul. Just what you ought to do, Chad. So we can be together for good. I'm not ashamed. If there ever was a time and a place to say it, it's now. I love you. And in whatever time is left, I wish to heaven you could say it back to me that you love me. I, I never thought I'd have the chance, but yes, now I have. Uh, hold it. Oh, hold it a minute. What? What is that? What, what, what is it? No, I, I raised something on the radio. Yes? Yes, would you repeat, please? Ah, this is uh, Major Alexander speaking. Good speed one. Moon constellation. Welcome. Acknowledge. Acknowledge. We welcome contact. Huh. We thought we'd bought it. Could you repeat that, please? Uh, we thought we were out of touch with anyone. Uh, we have oxygen supply for less than two days. You are our only hope of survival. Uh, what are you? Military? Procraft? Commercial flight? No, none of these. We, we, we've had an accident. A private flight locked in unaccountable weather conditions. Yes, we know. We have suspected that you were sucked in through the horn. What? what? Uh, repeat, please. The horn. Uh, we will not explain now. We must make preparations for your landing. Where? <laughs> On the moon? You could not maintain life there. Besides, you will need some approximation of Earth's atmosphere to land your obsolete craft. Obsolete? Uh, that's uh, something else we can discuss later. Do you have reserve fuel? Well, enough for, say, one and a half hours of normal flying under conditions as I understand them. Uh, then you have more than enough to land at good speed one. I am not familiar with that airport. <laughs> not surprising. Where is it located? The Earth? The Moon? Neither. It is a self-contained space station, one of the worlds of the future. I don't understand. We don't expect you to. Just put yourselves in our hands and uh, you will be safe. You realize that I am apparently in space in an aircraft not equipped to handle this medium. Ah, that is no problem for us. Let us bring you in by electric magnetic force field controls. Hey, Chad, did you see it? There's some great big UFO right off the starboard. It's spinning like a top. Oh, I not only see it, I'm talking with it. Uh, how do I identify you? Good speed one. Release all your controls and we will bring you home. Stand by your radio to start engines once we are inside of the envelope. The envelope? Certainly. You need air to land just as much as you need it to breathe. So do we. Keep this channel open. Suspended in space, one of our most sophisticated airplanes hangs out of its element on the edge of death. Four people inside it rely on the atmosphere to remain alive. Suddenly a voice from space is more than disembodied. It extends a helping hand. Who of us would not choose it? But at the same time, 
fear the consequences. I shall return shortly with Act Three. I want that sinus medicine. Headache tablet? No, it relieves headache and congestion, internal sinus pressure, and post-nasal drip. And it has added strength. You mean added strength. Sign off. Exactly. Added strength sign off tablets give you pure aspirin plus 50% more sinus drainer. To help sinus pain while you drain. Right. And more sinus drier for post nasal drip. Added strength sign off. The sinus medicine in the bright red box. Take when needed, only as directed. S I N E O F F. Sign off. Imagine the terror of having been catapulted into an accident in the air, only to find that instead of crashing to earth in flames and disaster, you are somehow suspended in space, in a vehicle not suited for this element, and with a rapidly diminishing supply of the air you need to breathe. Small wonder that you would grasp at any hope of staying alive. Now, you are inside the envelope, XN743. You are now in normal flight posture. Activate your engines. Roger. How about that? Very good. Now take your normal declination and follow the tower's instructions in. Where am I landing? As I told you before, station Goodspeed 1. And have no fears. We may be new to you in space, but believe me, we are very little different once you bring your spacecraft to our land. If you want it... You are coming home. Approach control. This is XN743. We have you, XN743. You are 1,500 feet from threshold, 50 feet high, and hot. Which at the airspeed is 70 knots too high. Oh, let's hope there's plenty of concrete. Well, maybe we should go around. We're out of fuel. This is it. You better pull back on the thrust. Touch those, I'll break your arm. Now, just hold on to your hat. <laughs> Welcome to Goodspeed One. I am Major Alexander. And I'm J. Bruce Proctor, and I can't waste any time. How soon can we get a connecting flight? Oh, I don't think you quite realize where you are, Mr. Proctor. Uh, uh, so tell me. You are now on space station number one, named at its inception as Goodspeed One. From here, the only connecting flights are to the moon and such other stopovers as you might select in our area. What are you talking about? I want to get home to Earth. <laughs> Many other people in your position have. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think you quite understand. Tomorrow morning, I have a meeting with my lawyers and all the other people from International Ore and Carbide. My deal has to be firmed up by the end of May. And that's the day after tomorrow. Oh, what year is that? Oh, come on, don't be ridiculous. This year, 1978. <laughs> then I think you can stop worrying about the whole deal. It's ancient history. You see, this is 2978. What? But last night before our flight was... What did you say? 29.78. I don't blame you for being surprised, sir. It's the consequence of falling through a time fold. The older we get, we do nod now and then and lose a few precious moments, huh? It must be catastrophic to wake up suddenly and realize that somewhere we've lost a thousand years. <laughs> I'd like to have a few words with you, Captain, if I may. Well, that suits me, Major Alexander. I'd like to have a couple with you. Where's Mr. Proctor? Uh, I'm afraid I had to have him temporarily restrained. Uh, one of our doctors is treating him now. Restrained? For his own good. He has a heart condition, or, or did you know? Oh, well, I knew he was hypertense. He's had at least one coronary. He should be more careful. Well, the man has no control. What's well, bugging him now? His belief that we are making a prisoner out of him, that is not true. I hope you understand that. Well, we are confined to the plane. You are quarantined, Captain Stevens, that is all. You must understand that this is a controlled environment. After nearly 1,000 years, we have finally managed to make our population almost 100% disease-free. We have no infectious or contagious disorders... 
and have made gigantic strides against the normal systemic ravages of old age. This is a far different world from yours, with its poisons, its savage wear and tear, its bent for destruction. What is your world like out there, Major? Uh, let's see. You are from the 20th century, 1978, correct? Yes. Yeah. Then you know nothing, of course, of the history of space stations like this, or um, colony orbits, as we call them. No, no, there's been talk and speculation about establishing them, but, of course, none have ever been started. I, I mean, uh, hadn't been before. Uh... <laughs> I can understand your problem with time folds. Even we are just getting used to them. Uh, I beg your pardon? Intergalactic flights are just moving out of the experimental stage now. It's possible to go to Centauri 4 now, for example. But the time lag there is really a bummer. Knocks you out. It's uh, approximately another 1,000 years. You're kidding. Not at all. Well, you were going to tell me something about the history of... What do you call this? Uh... Uh, Goodspeed 1. Yeah. We were the first station, you see. When was that? Oh, back in your millennium, around uh, 1990, I think. Maybe a couple of years later. Of course, it was nothing like it is now. Then it was just an experiment to collect and store solar power to bring cheap energy to Earth. You deliver energy to Earth now? Earth? <laughs> that, that burnt out cinder for what? Burnt out cinder? Well, I'm afraid Earth moved too late to develop energy. By the middle of the 21st century, it choked itself to death on ecological poison. Well, how did you and the other colonies you mentioned grow so large? Well, what would your choice have been? Our colonies grew by leaps and bounds. The waiting lists grew longer and longer. Here on good speed, we rotate at such a controlled speed that gravity is reproduced within the envelope that encloses us. Our grass is always green. We live in a temperature like that of Hawaii, and the air we breathe is pure. We are, uh, in so far as it is possible, all of one class. We are as close to utopia, I suppose, as man can come. And we can be part of this. Once you are decontaminated, I would think so. Oh, our immigration laws are necessarily strict, but yours is an unusual case. However, the, uh, the question may be academic. Oh, why? Because your employer is adamant that he must return to Earth. The burnt-out cinder. Ah, uh, not that Earth, no. <laughs> the one you left. Yes, but that's impossible. Not if you move quickly. I uh, won't go into scientific details, but that is why I wanted to talk to you. If we are to take advantage of the time fold that brought you here to return you, there is no time to lose. Now, as captain of the ship, it is entirely up to you. I can give you one hour to talk it over with the others, but no more. You're not going to try to get back, Chad. The big man's orders, Meg. He pays my salary. What else can I do? Well, stay here. Don't you know what it could mean? Yes. I know. We'd all be free. We could live our own lives. It'd be like a second chance, a chance to live down the mistakes. I understand. Well, isn't that what you want? It's not what I want. It's what Mr. Proctor wants. Oh, you can't be serious. What about what I want? What Jake wants? <laughs> Jake doesn't care where he lives. And me? Oh, you could be your own woman anywhere. Well, I'm not now. Uh -huh. Bought and paid for. Maybe it'd be the same here. No. Oh, Chad, don't you see? I'd be free here. He can't control me. And you're not free if you go back. You're only going back to her. To Alice? Oh, no. No, never. That's over. Well, she'll take you for everything you have. Okay, let her. We could manage somehow. If you stole me from J.B., he'd break us both, grind us to powder. We can still take the chance. Why, Chad? Why? Because if you and I are going anywhere, Meg, it has to be because we fought for it, not ran away from it. It has to be a, a matter of conscience. I have to go back. I have to live with myself. Maybe you should stay. No. No, darling. You're right. I have a conscience, too, that needs quite a bit of polishing. No, no, we'll go back together and face whatever has to be. God willing, it'll work out 
for us? We are circling you now, Captain Stevens, and drawing you by magnetic field toward the time fold. Roger, I read you. Now, we cannot guarantee your safe re-entry back to the last century. So, if you, or any of you, wish to change your mind, uh, this is it. What's he saying? What's he saying? He's giving us a last chance to back out, sir. Tell him absolutely not. We don't belong in this Jim Crack fantasy world. <laughs> we belong in the real one. Well, that's your decision, J.B. The others are entitled to theirs. Meg? Are you going back, Chad? Yes, I am. Then so am I. Okay. Jake? How can you fly a plane through all that flak without me, old buddy? Besides, I either want to be best man or give away the bride. Did you read me, Captain Stevens? I said this was your last chance to stay. I read you, sir. And our thanks for all you have done. But our decision is to return. Very well. Fire up your engines. Roger. Start completed. We'll start the countdown at 30. Bon voyage and good luck. Are you ready? Ready, sir. Synchronize. Coming up 30 on zip. Read 30. 29. 28. Get back and get belted in. JB, Meg. Go ahead, Meg. I heard what your co pilot buddy said, Stephen. I just want you to know. If we get back, I'll break you in two before I ever let you take Meg away from me. Wow. I hope I never have to sweat anything like that out again. <laughs> me too. But we lived through it. Hey, uh... Hey, Chad. Yeah? Did, uh, did I go off on some sort of a crazy trip or... <laughs> the Major? Good speed one? I don't know. Doesn't seem very real now, does it? Oh, hazy, man, hazy. Only, uh, what about you and Mag? Oh, that? <laughs> That's for real. How are you going to handle the heavyweight? I don't know. <sighs> take over. I better check back in the cabin. Okay, take your time. I feel a thousand years younger and ready for anything. Chad, quick. What is it, Meg? J.B., it, I think it was his heart. It, it, it was just too much. What? Is, is, is he dead? Well, right after we hit the turbulence, he just sort of hunched over. He he made this terrible sound and, and slumped. The way we were being thrown around, I couldn't get to him. Oh, Chad. Yes, dear. I feel terrible. I wished him dead so often. Oh, no, Meg, he, he, he wished this on himself. I wonder. What do you mean? It's like a gift from God. For us. Yeah. For the answer to a prayer. You know, you said, God willing, it'll work out for us. Meg, it seems like a thousand years, but we finally found our way home. Quite a little tale to muse over. The fact of CAT is real enough, but what was all the rest? Real or imagined? Does that really matter in the larger sense? All of our travelers returned safely from beyond whatever veil they penetrated, except one. And there will be few to measure the death of such a selfish man. I'll be back shortly. By the time you hear this program, or shortly after, the first experimental space station should have been placed in orbit. Of course, it'll be small, but it's a beginning. With the Earth's desperate need for new sources of energy, it doesn't stretch the imagination to think that within a thousand years, colonies like Godspeed One will not only exist, but will proliferate. Unfortunately, neither you nor I will be there to check the statement. 
But wouldn't you consider it a good bet? Our cast included Paul Hecht, Ian Martin, Evie Juster, and Fred Gwynn. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Mrs. E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.